Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. You're with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us uh, courtesy of Scott Johnston, uh, KD4EBL. And he says, uh, Dave, you've got a lot of great info on NFED half wave antennas. Plan on putting up uh, my antenna 8010 in my backyard. Uh, there are a number of people that make these. My antennas makes them. I've reviewed uh, one of theirs. Uh, they're made by other people. The league has a kit that you can use to build a 40 and up antenna uh, if you want. It's quite inexpensive. Um, I plan on putting uh, my antenna 8010 in my backyard. What I cannot figure is what is the, quote, ideal setup. Okay, let's talk about that for just a minute. Every antenna installation is a compromise of some kind. You may not have tall enough trees. You may not be able to run it in a straight line. Um, all of these kinds of things like that. And every antenna ends up being a compromise of some sort uh, for uh, its intended purpose. And that's true of these antennas too. It says, how high should the end point be? How high the near point? Should the um, ballon be close to the ground? Would you add a choke? Is the setup uh, slope set up the best way? Or try to get it horizontal? Finally, how far away from any other antenna should it be? While every antenna is never ideal, I want to maximize right in my results. Okay? And... Let's take a look. First of all, as we've noted before, a dipole is a dipole is a dipole. A dipole should be above ground. It should be one half wavelength long. Okay. And one half wavelength above the ground. This will give you an elevation pattern that is single lobe and the lowest possible with the actual direction of radiation like that. Okay, if you move this antenna down, and I'll do this in a blue color, if you move it down, you end up moving these lobes up. Okay, if you go up higher than that, you move the lobes down a little bit, but you end up getting a second lobe. So you split the uh, radiation in some way. Now you immediately see the problem. A half-wave dipole in-fed half-wave, like 80 through 10, if it's set up to be a half-wave for 80, it's a full wave for 40. And a uh, two-wave for 20 and so on. All multi-band antennas suffer from the same problem. There really is no ideal height for it. Now if you wanted to, you'd, you want to stretch the thing horizontally, even if you feed it at the end, okay, and it would be a half wavelength of 80 meters, which would be 40 meters, or about 132 feet in the air, end to end, you put the ballon right there. Now that is wildly impractical for most hams. Okay, so you're going to string it lower. And if you string it lower and you put the ballon at one end and still keep it horizontal like that, you're going to have lobes that point up a little bit on this thing. In other words, the radiation is going to tend to go a little more up than out the lower this thing goes. Now, it's often impractical to put the um, 49 to 1 unun, it's technically an un, un, u, in, u, in, unbalanced to unbalanced. Okay, it's often impractical to put that high in the air. So, what many people do is they'll make a V out of this thing. And this distance here will be as high as you can. A Hayek, as high as you can, okay. 
This will be down lower, but should be seven feet or so, so that people can walk under it without guillotining themselves. And this again, seven feet. Get this as high as you can. The NFED half wave that my antennas makes in the instructions kind of implies this approach. And I put my top at 22 feet because that's the highest I could get. The antenna worked quite well. I knew it would work signals closer to home than a true DX antenna, but it still worked uh, uh, quite, quite well for that. As I said, the bell on, or on, 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 on 49 to 1 has got the center line of the coax, the shield on the coax, okay, and then it comes out here to this wire, but that leaves the terminal begging. What do you do with that? That terminal, because it's an unknown, uh, and because it's an auto transformer, is actually connected back here. This would mean that the outside of the shield can act as your counterpoise if you come down here to the point where you're grounded with a lightning arrestor, okay, down here at the bottom, or I guess more appropriately, a lightning surge protector or lightning induced surge protector. Anyway, it's, it's here. Then this part acts as the counterpoise and it's grounded at this end. If not, if you were to put a coil right here of wire or something, a choke, then this counterpoise current has nowhere to go. And if that is the case, I would add a wire dangling here from the little um, wing nut on the bottom of the ballon. And you can experiment with the length of that to get the best idea of what to do. So you could put it up this way, you could put it up this way, you could put it up this way like an L, something like that all from this. Usually you want this above the ground to the point that nobody's going to um, trip on it, hurt themselves uh, with this. If you were to put this on a mast, you could do this too. If you've got a mast here of some kind, you could put the ballon right here, bring the coax down here, take the wire from the antenna up here and then over to a tree, that's my tree, uh, or stuff like that, and get an idea. Just get the thing in the air as much as you can, and you'll have pretty good luck with it. Now, an in-fed half wave will not tune one to one, and that's because of the way the reactances work and so on. But you might get down to say 1.6 to 1, 1.4 to 1, 1 1.2 to 1, somewhere in that range, or it might even be just two to one. Now, what you can do with that is most, well, all today's modern radios have built-in antenna tuners. If it doesn't, you can get a little outboard antenna tuner. And you can tune out that last little vestige of uh, mismatch from the thing. Okay, so um, that way you can use the antenna on different bands, the amount of mismatch will vary on a band. Again, an NFED halfway for 40 uh, or 80 will just not work well on 60. Now, somebody asked me once if you could just make a fan a dipole of that and from the feed point of the unun, just attach a 60 meter dipole, which would be 30 meters or 66 feet. And whoops, 60 meter, 30 meters, 30 times 390, about 100 feet long. Okay, and do that. I've never tried it, never thought of it. You can try it and uh, see what happens. Okay, so um, Scott, I think we've answered all of your questions. And uh, this is one of those cases where there is no ideal. There's no perfect. There's just try it different ways and see what works best for you. And I commend you for your antenna um, investigative uh, uh, sensibility because that's the way you make better antennas is by try, try, and try again for whatever works for your backyard. So 
If uh, anybody has watched this far, I hope that you will click subscribe and like and share. And also, if you would like to help financially support this channel so that I can continue bringing you these videos, I ask you to uh, check out decastlercom support for different ways that you can support this channel with a one-time tip, a repeating tip, or Patreon. And until we next meet, 73.